What's up everybody, welcome back, my name is Dayton Silt, and this is a continuation of the 101010 uh, Agricross Seed Breeder that's been automated with Integrated Dynamics. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to probably finish off the build. Um, what that means is we're going to add a chest so that we can import brand new seeds, and we're going to make sure that we can export seeds as well. Um, to do that, we're going to need a couple of items. Um, I'm also going to try and do this video in one go, so there's not so much chopping and changing, so hopefully it's easier to follow. Um, so I'm just going to explain what we're going to do. We're going to have uh, a chest here that we can import the seeds with. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to need an inventory reader, and we're going to need an interface. And we're also going to need to add a block breaker and move this interface up. Um, we're going to have to change some of the choice cards around. Um, currently, we have this operate new seed, which does the, you know, if it has a seed, operate the rake, otherwise operate the trowel. And we need to change that so it's, we either operate the rake or we operate the trowel if we have a cross crop. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not cross crop, just a crop stick. So I'm just going to get started. So I'm just going to grab the items from the chest that I left here. Grab the programmer, variable cards, a labeler, and we'll grab the watering can as well. And we're going to grab a couple more items. We're going to grab an inventory reader. I'm going to grab item interface. I'm going to grab, we're going to use a mini chest. I'll explain why in a minute. And we need a block breaker. Uh, sorry, a world block importer. And finally, we're going to need some cables, which I'm just going to grab from here. So we're going to set up the chest first so that it pulls in to the a new seed into the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the inventory reader down. We're going to put the mini chest on top of that. And I'm going to put the item interface on the side here. Make sure you right click the side of the chest, not the cable here, because otherwise it'll attach it to the cable and not read properly. The next step we need to do is on the inventory, on the sorry, interface here, we need to set the channel to minus one. And that's just so that it doesn't interfere with the chest over there it will still mean that our interface can grab the seeds, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a couple of variables. Um, the first variable we're going to create is going to be from the inventory reader. And there's a action right down the bottom here called slot item. And the slot item is, it allows, well, it allows you to choose a slot. So for example, zero is the first slot in the chest. This mini chest only has one. And it will take whatever items there. So if we put a variable card in here, you can see it creates an aspect of slot item and the type is it returns an item. So we can put this into an interface and that will then just pull the first item in here, which is always going to be a seed because that's where you're pumping into it. Now, if we had a bigger chest, a bigger chest, obviously they've got multiple slots. And if you say, you, you have to write a lot more code essentially to tell it to always pull the first seed that it finds. Otherwise, it would just pull the first seed and you won't have any luck. So I would definitely advise just using the mini chest just for simplicity's sake. So we've created this variable card and we're going to name it. So let's just name this new seed slot and shove that in there. And don't forget to hit right. And we're going to put this in a variable store here for now. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to create three variables. We need to create, actually no, we're not going to create a variable yet. We're going to just continue finishing off the build. So if we just go into the interface and grab the new seed, so we grab this variable card. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this one here. Oh, and I forgot to get a new one. Uh, it's not an interface, it's a simulator, sorry. Grab that, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put it right above, and we're going to put block importer below that. And with this interface here, we want it to interact with block below, but the only way to do that is if it's either on top or if we tell it to use the top of this block. So if you go into the simulator and change the target side to be the top or up, and just save that. And now anything that this in this simulator does, we'll do it from the top. So we can place cross crops. We can't place seeds due to a bug, but we'll work around that, that's not a problem. The block interface is going to break anything in front of it and import it into the system. In this instance, it will break the crop sticks, which is fine, it's just gonna go back into our crop stick part of it. And it will also break the 30 seed. 
And in order to get that 30 seed, we need to you know, we need to know if it is 30. So that, these are the variables we're going to create now. So first of all, let's open up a programmer, and let's type in integer. And we want this integer to be 30. We're going to call this max seed value, and we put that in there. Then we're going to do another one called uh, no, sorry, not going to create another one. We're just going to use the max seed value for now. Where am I? That's supposed to go back in there for now. Just for the moment, we will be taking it out and modifying it. So now that we have the max seed value of 30, we can determine if we want this block. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say if the old strength gain growth total is equal to the max seed value, return true and that's going to be a boolean which is going to be an equals so we're going to say if the old total matches the max seed value return true and we're going to call this is max value pull that out and now that we've got the max value we're just literally going to stick that in the block breaker and now anytime this seed here is 30 we know we want to break it so I'm going to put that back I'm going to put the max seed value up here, and everything should be green again. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we change our operate new seed up here. And we're going to change it by we're going to keep it relatively similar. If it has an old if it has an old seed, operate the rake. If not, that's where we need to change it. So let's pull this out for now, and we're going to create some more variables. The first variable that we're going to need to create is a variable called is the system in use and the way we've determined if it's in use is if the trowel has a value and the old or the old seed has a value and the best way to do that is just to add them together so let's grab those values now so let's grab the trowel total value the old seed total value and we'll create an integer sorry an addition and we're going to add these two together I'm going to call this the total system value. And then we're going to create a boolean, sorry, not a boolean, an integer, getting it mixed up today. And we're going to leave it at zero, and we're just going to call this system zero value. And then we're going to compare them. We're going to say, if the total system, oh, if I click that correctly, if the total system value is more than zero, we know that the system's in use. We know there's either a seed in the trowel or there's a seed down on in the front there. So if we do that, I'm going to call it is system in use. I'm going to keep this boolean card on us. The rest of them we're going to put away. So let's do that now. System zero value, total system value both strength and the trial. So with this boolean, this system in use, we can determine two things. Do we want the seed, which we already know we do because it's going to be 30 that's going to pick it up. We can also determine if it's not in use, should we grab the new seed over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a choice card. Our choice card is going to be essentially this, but instead of using an empty item, we want to use the new seed. So we're going to do the following. We're going to grab empty item. If I can find it. We're going to grab our seed card and we've got our boolean there. So let's do a choice. What do we do? If the system is in use, then just continue using the old item. Otherwise, we want to use the new seed slot. Let's do that and we're going to say use new seed. Uh, next, we're going to grab this one out of here and we're going to mimic it. So we need to grab our is trial more than old value and our rake. So let's do that now. Where are we? Is trial, where are we? Where have I lost that variable card? 
Oh wait, hold on. It's trail more than old. Where is that? I'm sure you guys know where it is more better than I do. Oh wait, it's in my display, isn't it? That explains everything. So we're gonna do a choice again. Let's say if the trail. Did I forget to grab the trail? No. Hold on, guys. I've got myself messed up here. Sorry, we need to grab the rake. That's it. And we're going to do the choice again. We're going to do choice. Is trail more than Nord? If it is, use the rake. If it's not, use the new seed. I'm going to name this pretty much the same as what we call the other one, which is Operate Rake. Let's go and place that back in there. So you see now your Operate Rake should say, is trial more than old? Use the rake, otherwise use new seed. And it only use new seed if the system's not in use. So let's put our variable class back again. Is system in use? Operate new seed. Put the rake back, put the empty item back. This trail model and all just going to go back in my display. And we need to use new seed in here as well. This operate rake is now useless and can be deleted. So your system should now be green. So as long as everything is green, we can then get along to modifying the place simulator up here. And we need to essentially keep it how it was, but we need to just make the change to say if it's if there is a cross crop here. Sorry, if there's not a cross crop here, we need to place a cross crop. Otherwise, just continue using it as it was. So the way we're going to do that is if I find it here. This is the card that was originally in that simulator that I put away for some random reason, but we need to create a variable to say if there is a cross crop here or not. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to grab the NBT, we're going to grab the cross crop string, and we're going to just say if there is a value for the NBT. So we're going to use has, NBT has key. Put our NBT in there, put the old seed, put the cross crop in there, and return a value. We're going to say old has cross crop and then from this we need to create a couple there's a couple of different choices Just gonna get rid of that mini chest so at the moment as you can see the old operate new seed checks if the old has seed and it operates rake otherwise it operates the trial and we just need to essentially change the trial part of this and we're going to create a choice that says if it has an old cross crop use the trowel, otherwise use the cross crop. So let's grab our item cards, let's grab our trowel, let's grab our crop sticks. Let's go into here and do choice. Old has cross crop, use the trowel. If it doesn't, use the cross crop, sorry, use the crop sticks. And we're going to call this use crop sticks. So now we have that. Now we just need to mimic this. So we need to grab our old has seed and our operate rake. So let's find old has seed and our operate rake. And we're going to say if the old has a seed, operate the rake. Otherwise, operate the crop sticks. So, sorry, not operate crop sticks, use the crop sticks. And we're going to call this the exact same as what we had it before, which is operate new seed. So now that we have this one, we can get rid of the old one. Operate new seed goes into the top in the click item here. And then we just put our variables back again. There's cross crop, old has cross crop. Our use crop sticks is going in there. 
crop six going here, trial, operate rake, old has seeds going back up there, and our MBT. And that should be the system complete. Now I'm just going to go off camera and just grow some seeds, and I'll show you the results. Actually, before I do that, I can just show you straight away. So now the system is empty, and if we were to pipe a seed into here, so let me just grab a seed. If I was to put that in here, you can see it's automatically being planted, and it's exactly what we want. So I'm going to grow, grow this off screen, and I'll be back once it's grown. Okay, so I've got the seed to 29. Now, hopefully, if we've done everything right, I'm going to grow this seed, uh, start growing it now. And we should see, and just to make sure here, I do have a new seed in here ready to go. That's the aluminium. Let's do this. Hopefully, it works first time. Grow, grow, grow. Let's see. Oh, is that a 30? Nope, oh, that's not a 30. Damn it. Let's go for a 30. Come on. Of course, if you had growth accelerators moving that lot, this would take a couple of seconds at tops. Growth accelerators, sprinklers, greenhouse glass. You've got the, you know, there's no end to how many accelerators you can place, really. Which I'd wish I'd done right now. And there's a 30. And that's broken it. And as you can see, our new seed is now in there. Let's just double check it's gone. It's not there. And this, if we look at this, this tier 6 seed right here, it's 5 in BT tags. If we just shove that into a seed analyzer quickly. Let's go. Analyze that seed. This should be your 30, 30, 30 seed. Wow, that takes a while. And there we go, completely automated, pump your seeds into here, get your seeds out of here, off we go. Now I've got a couple of other ideas for other videos I can use for automating. I'm thinking about doing, uh, if any of you know the mod Flux Network, so it's got quite a fun little method of creating Flux, and that'd be fun to automate. I'm also thinking about doing a playthrough series where we just use integrated dynamics. I mean, it can transfer power faster than any cables except for cryothium cables from thermal expansion with thermal dynamics. It can do fluid, it can do items, it's got logic. I think we could build some pretty interesting networks. But uh, I don't know, you let me know what you want in the description. And uh, don't worry about liking and subscribing, I'm not expecting this to go far. And I'll see you about. Cheers. Bye bye.